Scanning Auger Microscopy, or SAM. An SEM is made up of a linear column topped with an electron source. Throughout the column, there are electromagnetic lenses which act to narrow and direct the electron beam downward toward the positively biased sample. The electron beam passes through a series of apertures, which further narrow the beam diameter. The electron beam finally passes by a series of scanning coils near the sample, which serve to deflect the beam, scanning it across the sample surface. The scanning coils of the SEM move the electron beam across the sample in a row-by-row -row fashion, collecting the scattered electrons at each point. These various signals are then reconstructed into an image with resolution down to one nanometer in precision. Many different phenomena arise when the high-energy electron beam hits the sample surface. Some of the electrons are quickly flung back toward the source with energies close to the original beam energy. These electrons are called backscattered electrons. A fraction of electrons are deflected back at smaller angles and are called secondary electrons. These are the electrons primarily used for imaging. Due to the high energy nature of the electron beam, sample electrons can be excited and upon relaxation can emit light as x-rays or as visible photons in a process known as cathodoluminescence. A small portion of sample electrons at the very surface of the sample can be ejected with a relatively low energy. These are called Auger electrons and are the primary focus of scanning Auger microscopy. While the electron beam is fairly narrow at the sample surface, the high energy electrons penetrate a great deal beneath the surface, spreading out as they do so. This sample volume is teardrop shaped and is the place where backscattered and secondary electrons are generated, as well as visible and x-ray photons. This interaction volume can be as deep as 5 micrometers depending on the beam energy. Conversely, Auger electrons can only escape the sample interaction volume within the first few nanometers from the surface, giving Auger microscopy an upper hand in studying surface composition. Consider an atom in the sample with multiple shells of electrons surrounding the nucleus. A high energy electron from the electron beam can collide with and eject a core electron in this atom. A higher energy electron within the atom can then take its place, releasing the difference in energy in the form of an ejected higher energy electron. This ejected electron is termed an Auger electron. Alternatively, this difference in energy can be lost through the emission of an X-ray which is a competing process to Auger electron generation. If we consider the branching ratio of these two processes, we find that the relative yield for Auger electron generation decreases with increasing atomic number, while the competing process of X-ray generation becomes more favorable. The spectrum of Auger electron energies from an element is typically plotted as a function of kinetic energy. This type of plot is not very revealing of the signature of the element in question, as the peaks are relatively broad and hard to analyze. However, the differentiated spectrum sharpens the peaks in the Auger spectrum, making it more clear the unique spectral features in each spectrum. The differentiated spectrum is the most common method for Auger electron analysis. Each element has a characteristic fingerprint in the Auger spectrum, allowing for differentiation of multiple elements within one sample. Most commonly, the most intense peak in a grouping of peaks within the differentiated spectrum is used to identify the element. For example, aluminum would be identified by the large peak at 1396 EV, rather than the smaller peaks surrounding it. This analysis can be performed at each location of the SEM raster scanning on the sample surface, yielding an Auger spectrum at each point. This is indicative of the elements present at that location on the sample surface. Through this technique, multiple elemental domains within the first few nanometers of the sample surface can be mapped out, yielding elemental information to correspond with the image generated by the SEM. Additional elemental information can be obtained through Auger spectroscopy by pairing it with a high-energy ion gun. This ion gun can be used to etch the surface of the sample, allowing for Auger electron analysis at a deeper region. This type of analysis can give very precise elemental information, but is destructive to the sample surface. Auger electron detectors have various geometries, but a common technique is through use of a hyperbolic field analyzer. This detector draws Auger electrons to it using a positive bias. 
Upon entering the detector, the OJ electrons are subject to a hyperbolic electric field, allowing them to travel different distances depending on their kinetic energy. In this way, an OJ spectrum can be obtained at each point of the SEM image. By virtue of the measurement, SEM and SAM are operated under ultra-high vacuum, limiting the samples which can be analyzed. Liquid or volatile samples cannot be analyzed in this way under normal circumstances. Also, due to the fundamental process underlying OJ emission, hydrogen and helium cannot be analyzed by OJ electron spectroscopy as they have too few electrons. The opposite issue arises with very heavy elements. Such elements emit very low amounts of OJ electrons and rather emit X-rays, limiting their applicability in OJ spectroscopic analysis. As with most electron-based microscopies, a high-energy electron beam must interact with the sample. In the case of scanning OJ spectroscopy, a typical spectrum takes about 50 milliseconds. Very easily damaged samples may be difficult to analyze by this method. Insulating samples also pose a challenge to analyze by OJ electron microscopy. Insulating samples prevent the flow of electrons away from the interaction area, creating a buildup of charge which can deflect the incoming electron beam away from the sample. This effect can make imaging and analyzing insulating samples very challenging.